Welcome back to my channel. I hope you are having a great day. Today in this video, we're gonna talk about how to solve exponential equations. So I did a previous video and I'll put the link in the comments on how to solve one method for solving exponential equations. So first of all, let's just talk about what an exponential equation is. So an exponential equation is something that looks like this, of this form. You have some base raised to some exponent is equal to something else. But the thing about the exponent is that your variable is in the exponent, all right? So in the previous video that I made, I showed you how to solve exponential equations by rewriting both sides so that they have the same base. If you could rewrite both sides so that they have the same base, then you could basically just take the exponent, set them equal to each other, and solve for the variable. However, you cannot always do that. You cannot always rewrite both sides so that they have the same base. So in this video, I'm gonna show you a second method for solving exponential equations, and this will involve taking the log of both sides. So you could take the common log of both sides, or you could take the natural log of both sides, or you could take the log with any base of both sides. It's just whatever you do to one side, you have to do it to the other side. Once you can take the log of both sides, then you can remove that variable out of the exponent by using your properties of logs, the one that takes the exponent and pulls it in front of the log. So let's look at some examples. In this first example, we wanna solve seven to the x is equal to 12. So this is an exponential equation because your variable is in the exponent, right? So what you have to do is be able to get that variable out of the exponent. You can basically try to rewrite both sides so that they have the same power. The only power you will be able to write is seven, and there's no way you can rewrite 12 with the power of seven. Seven to the second power is 49, which is way bigger than 12, so you cannot rewrite seven with the power that is um, an integer that's gonna be equal to 12. Um, so we wanna go to our second method for solving exponential equations, and that's basically, let's take the log of both sides. So I'm gonna take the log of seven to the x, and I'm gonna take the log of 12. And I'm just taking the common log. Again, you can take log with any base, but that's why it's called the common log, because we use it a lot, so I'm using the common log. Um, now you can use your properties of log. So one of the properties of log says that when you have the log of something raised to a power, you can basically take this power and move it to the front of the log, and it becomes multiplication. So this becomes x times log seven equal to log 12. And now you can easily solve for x by, because this is x times log seven, and log seven is just a number. So what you would do to get x by itself is you would do the opposite of multiplication, which is divide. You would divide both sides by log seven. And so the log sevens will cancel and you will get x is equal to log 12, which is just a number, over log seven, which is just a number. So this will be your exact answer. And if you had to um, find approximation, I'm grabbing my calculator. If you had to find approximation, then you would just basically do log in your calculator, 12 divided by log seven. And make sure you close those parentheses. and hit enter and you get approximately 1.2769 and some more numbers if i round it to three decimal places that's approximately 1.277 so that's how you will solve that exponential equation that means seven raised to the 1.277 power and i could go back and check it right i'm gonna do seven this carrot key is raising it to a power and then I'm going to do, I did second in the negative sign because on the negative side and it says A and S, that means it's going to put the answer in. So whatever my previous answer was. And look what I get. When I do seven to that power, I get 12. So that lets me know that my answer is correct because it checks out. For example, two, we want to solve e to the x squared equal 200. This is also an exponential equation because my variable is in the exponent. It's in the exponent of the e. Um, the first method that we talked about solving exponential equations is rewriting both sides so that they have the same base. And I cannot rewrite 200 with the base of E, um, not an integer base of E. So what I want to do is I want to take the log of both sides. That's my second method for solving exponential equations. Now, I, in the last problem, the last example, I took the common log of both sides. 
But in this example, I want to take the natural log of both sides. Do you know why I want to take the natural log of both sides? Hopefully, you made the connection of natural log because for natural log, the base is E. So remember, natural log of X is equivalent to log base E of X. And there is a property that says whenever, so I'm going to come back to that property. So let me take the natural log of both sides first. So if I take the natural log of both sides, I get natural log of e to the x squared equal natural log of 200. Now there's a property of log that says when you have the log of something raised to a power, you can pull that power in front. So and it becomes multiplication. So this becomes x squared times natural log of e equal natural log of 200. Now there's a property that says whenever your base, so log base a and your argument a is the same, then that equals to one. And so this natural log of E, because that is the same as log base E, so natural log of E is the same as log base E of E. So since my base is the same as this value right here, then this is equivalent to one. So natural log of E is one. So this goes to one. X squared times one is X squared. So that is x squared equal natural log of 200. And now I want to solve for x squared. I want to solve for x, I mean. So to get rid of the square, I take the square root of both sides. And whenever you take the square root, you take the plus or minus square root. So this becomes plus or minus square root of natural log of 200. So this is your exact answer, and that's supposed to be x, sorry. So the square root and the square cancel, and you get just x here. And you get equals plus or minus the square root of natural log of 200. So this is the exact answer for x. However, if you had to do a decimal approximation, what you would do is just basically do the square root of natural log 200. I'm plugging in, and you have to close both parentheses. So let's see, can you see that? So I just did the square root of natural log of 200 and I closed both parentheses. And so um, once you hit enter, you get approximately 2.301, or if you round it to three decimal places, 02. So X is approximately plus or minus 2.302. So that's an approximation. And again, this is your exact answer. That's what I have in the plug into the calculator. So you just have to look and see what is it that your instructor is looking for or your homework platform, is it looking for the exact answer or is it looking for an approximation? And that will determine which of these two answers you will put, put in. Now, actually these are, it's four answers. This is two answers. It's positive square root of two, natural log of 200 and negative square root of natural log of 200. And it's positive 2.302 and negative 2.302. It's two answers, right, for each one. That's why I say it's four answers. So it's actually just two answers to the problem. So this is how you will solve, uh, this is another way you will solve exponential equations by just taking the log of both sides. You could take log of any base, so it basically depends on what your base is. Um, you could always use the uh, common log, but if you have a base, uh, like a base E, then you want to take a natural log. Um, if you have any questions whatsoever, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below. Hopefully this made sense to you. Um, if not, thank you. If not, make sure you ask your questions. Um, I will respond. And thanks for tuning in. I will see you in the next video.